Hello, fellow gamers. Welcome to the Video Gamers Podcast, where three lifelong gamer dads get together to discuss gaming. On Thursdays like today, we look at recent gaming news over the last week and provide some of our thoughts. Now, I know that we are a family-friendly show over here, but this intro is going to be a little bit TV Y7, you know, maybe a little (laughs) bit PG. We can blame Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 for uh, too many funny quotes here this week. I am your host, Paul. Joining me, he can be found running naked and drunk in the streets, telling all the people to piss off. It's Josh. (laughs) Guilty. (laughs) And still doing it. Yeah, just can't stop me, guys. (laughs) Oh, man, I I, I had to quote that here in the intro. And then joining Josh and me, he's a bastard, peasant, orphan, lover, warrior. It's Ryan. (laughs) Uh, What else would I be? That's the best multi-combo ever. Use the first letter for each word. It spells out something. Oh, no, you're going to make me think back. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> Dang it, Paul, you ruined it. Oh, that would have been funny, for though. Ryan to sit yeah. there. 15 minutes later. Yeah. 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 Oh, man. Guys, we've got some stuff to talk about here today. This is going to be a fun show. Before we start in our normal news stories that we cover, we do owe two shout outs to people on Patreon. We want to say thank you to jwit116. We also want to say thank you to Eric, aka Grim Ghost, um, who is not on our Discord, but both of them have signed up with Rare Status, and so we just wanted to say thank you so much to both of them. Yeah, thank you. Yay! Hey, for everybody that's listening to this podcast, these people that support the podcast are the reason we're still here, so you know, just a, just a little mental thank you to all the supporters of the show. We love you. Yeah. Oh, we absolutely love them. If any of our listeners out there want to join their ranks, head over to MultiplayerSquad.com. You can sign up. You'll get bonus episodes, shout out on the show, all kinds of good stuff. Again, that's MultiplayerSquad.com. All right. Let's start with a very quick update to a story we talked about last week. We talked a little bit about how Star Wars Outlaws has story content gate kept behind a paywall which we knew is a mission including Jabba the Hutt. We did talk a little bit about how we weren't too sure if it was all of the content with Jabba or just like one mission or something like that. Well, Ubisoft did clarify this week that it is just one mission that is optional. The Huts are one of the main syndicates. They said, don't worry, you'll still interact with them a ton. This is just one additional mission that you'll miss out if you do not buy the season pass. Uh, I think we're probably all on the same page. I'm guessing paid DLC in a single player game is still dumb. Um, but at the same time, I guess at least it's not a worst case scenario. We'll still be able to interact with the huts. Uh, anything else to say before moving on to our normal stories? Just why? That's If it's, yeah. One, yeah. One, it's one mission, you think everyone is going to come clamoring over one mission and buy your season pass? It just... The optics, it looks so much worse over that one mission than probably the return they'll get for the season passes. It just doesn't make sense. It, I mean, we're not talking a $5 difference here. This is a $70 difference. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you're telling me that you're paying $70 for a mission that is just an optional thing in the game anyway. You know, I, well, I, you, you get you get it three days early too, Josh. Yeah, don't, don't for forget. a single player game. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Day day one DLC that's paid just makes me so mad. It's for already player. made. It's already like yeah. I work for a company that provides a digital product to like you know I mean it, it's 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 like a foundation of our company, but it's like at the same time like this product exists whether you buy it or not at that point. You know what I mean? So it's like it, it's the same thing. Like you've already put the development time in. Like Ubisoft already has this. They're literally taking scissors and going snip. You don't get to play that part unless you pay us an extra $70. Yeah. I still say just wait a couple months and then release it. People wouldn't care as much. Day one is just so, so bad. All right. Well, we already complained about this last week. Let's go ahead and move on to something new. This week, we got an announcement along with a trailer for Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, which I feel like delivered so much comedy 
in the trailer oh, yeah. that you know I had to quote here in the beginning. This is an open world action RPG. It is coming out before the end of the year. It'll be on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. It is set in the early 15th century. It has a major focus on historical realism, especially in regards to medieval combat. And they said compared to the first game, which I did not play, this one is twice as big. And they also said that this game is what the first one was supposed to be, except they did not have the resources or the expertise to make it. Um, Above all, it seemed to me, after watching a lot of content and checking out the first game, this is really just supposed to be the most immersive medieval combat game out there on the market. And I was very curious to hear if you guys care about this one. Is this one that you want to check out? What are your thoughts? I am actually pretty interested in this. I have heard a lot of people talk about Kingdom Come Deliverance. I've never played it, but I have seen people gush over this game. And, and you know, the sentiment is usually the same. It's the most realistic medieval fantasy like game that I've played. You are living in this world. The combat seems ultra realistic. Like you can only swing your sword a few times before your dude gets tired. I mean, you're wearing big heavy armor. This isn't casting fireballs and getting smashed by, you know, cyclopses and stuff like that. Like, this is what it would be like to live back then. And I think that resonates with a lot of people. Um, I am oddly curious about this, to be honest with you. I've always loved medieval times. Um, I like the idea. <laughs> not, the, no, I mean, I like that place too, Paul. Red night. Red night. No, I like green night, man. Come on. Yellow night. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, (laughs) yeah, I'm interested, man. This trailer, I think, was super well done. Um, For somebody that doesn't know anything about the first game, like, this looks like a AAA title to me. I mean, it graphically pleasing, the voice acting, the story, the combat is weird because it goes into, like, first person. Is the whole game in first person? It doesn't look like it. That's the only part that confused me was it's, like, it's skipping around between like a story trailer to first person combat to now the guys are almost looking at each other as if it was like Street Fighter, where it's like the one dude's on the left <laughs> and the other dude's on the right. And I'm like, is he going to uppercut this guy? Like, what's going on, man? Um, well, yeah. And there's a lot of cutscenes. So they said there's more than five hours of cutscenes. Yeah. I think the game itself is all first person. Uh, but yeah, Ryan, was there anything that stuck out to you here in, in what you saw? It just seemed to be. <laughs> To me, it looks like it's going to be one of those games when the comedy and the action and the gameplay and the graphics all kind of hit. So I'm really excited to see where this goes. I definitely uh, never touched the first one, but watching the you know the the footage that we watched, I- I'm highly intrigued. I mean, I've always same like Josh, you know, kind of medieval ages. I've all Western cowboy is like my number one, but you know, this knights and shining armor is definitely close behind. So I'm interested to see what they can do with this. It looks beautiful. Um, Looks like it'll have that comedic relief, you know, running through the town like Josh. (laughs) So uh, yeah, I'm excited to see where it's going to go. Well, and I really like the fact that anytime you ever see any kind of portrayal of like knights during the early 15th century, everything is so drab and dirty and gross, but Mm -hmm. this is a little bit more vibrant. Like you get a sense of these are just like normal people living at that time, but things are colorful. They showed that there's a lot of different facets of life. Like you see a little shot of a wedding ceremony and you also see a lot of celebration, but then you do also see hangings of people and like surprise attacks against your castle and things like that. One thing that I thought sounded really cool, which is the whole foundation of the first game, is that there are like a hundred ways to resolve every quest, and there's always consequences in how you do it. So they were saying, for example, you can talk your way out of problems. If you don't want to fight, a lot of times that's a choice. You can choose to be a thief. You can choose to resolve your issues through violence. They even had a little tagline in the trailer. You can save the world or punish it for its sins. And so I love the idea of being able to like tinker, do all kinds of crazy weird stuff and and see what happens as a result. You guys know how much I love that. This is why I love Dragon Age and Mass Effect and Divinity Original Sin 2, you know, figuring out different ways to resolve quests. So that to me is probably the biggest selling point here 
Yeah, I love. I am a sucker for let me play the game I want to the way I want to play it, and let me try to be creative on how I approach these problems. So, I, I mean, I'm I'm pretty intrigued by this to be honest. The first game came out in 2018, so it's not like it's super old. I'm actually watching a little bit of footage. It's a darn good looking game. I've heard so much about it, so it's just really weird to like not know anything about it yet like hearing good things and stuff like that. Um, I am really intrigued by this so far, to be honest. Like, I think I'd like to he- like see some gameplay, you know, maybe a preview or something like that to get a little bit more information. Um, but yeah, I- I'm down to be a scoundrel knight, you know, and just, <laughs> yeah, or streaking through town. You know, one of, one of those two definitely fits me. And I don't, I don't know if you guys got this vibe too, but but watching that and seeing them talk about the game and and just about the world, it seemed like they are all in on this. So that that was exciting to kind of see, and and hopefully it, it comes through in the game. Yeah, and I love the idea of like they've already made the game, and instead of trying to make something wholly different, like let's just refine it and make it bigger and better. They said you don't have to play the first one in order to play the second. I guess the whole point of the game is that you're a guy who's out for revenge against people who butchered your family. So I think you're a little bit like Maximus from gladiator kind of out on a revenge mission. And they said that you like start out as a nobody and then kind of like work your way up. The one resounding criticism I saw against the first game was that the combat is very hard to learn. Yeah. And almost any time someone complained, a bunch of people were there to post saying, oh, I bet you just didn't play long enough that you got good at the combat. So it sounds like that part might be a little frustrating. But I think for those when it did hit with a gamer that they really, really loved it. Um, I'm just real quick too, because like I said, we kind of all said, we don't really know much of the first game. Uh, this review, it, it, <laughs> this kind of pulls me in. This dude's got 200 hours on record and it says, I've been playing PC games for 20 to 25 years now. Kingdom come deliverance is the best game I've ever played. Period. It is the most interesting, immersive experience one can have. Real life logic and attention gets you far in this game. Each problem has a logical solution. There are multiple ways to solve each quest. I love it. I'm in, boys. You know, at that point, like, yeah, that sounds fantastic to me. And I like melee combat. So, Paul, I know you might struggle a little bit there, but they did show a dude riding on a horse shooting crossbows. And they kind of mentioned for (laughs) two, for the sequel, that there's like very beginner like pistols, you know, like black powder pistols. You may just get one shot kind of thing on them. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty interested in this game at this point, man. And we're all big music people like the entire like we did also share I think it was like a 15 minute video. The entire last four minutes is just them showing off the score with like an orchestra. And I love the fact that they're incorporating like harps along with the violins and the cellos and the trombones and all the horns like the music's beautiful. It seems like for a game focusing so much on immersion, like the music is so central to that. So to me, everything here sounded great. The fact that they started with a dev team of 11 for the first game and then grew to over 200 employees, like they have a lot more people working on it now. So I'm very curious to keep an eye on this one. And it comes out this year. We're always saying like (laughs) announce this stuff three to six months in advance. And that's exactly what they did. here. Yeah. You get a bonus in my book for that one too. So, Absolutely. All right. Well, let's go ahead and take a short break and then we'll be right back. All right, guys, this next story here has me very excited. Do you guys want to know what my all time favorite Sega Genesis game series was? Ooh. Hmm. Sega Genesis. Hmm. All right. It's Toe Jam and Earl, which oh, we're not okay. talking about today. I do remember that. Yep. But my second favorite series on the Genesis was Golden Axe. Oh, yeah. And I I know Josh likes Golden Axe. I do. Ryan, did you play Golden Axe back in the oh, day? I played a heck of a lot of Golden Axe. Every time I I had it, and then any time I would be out and about and I'd see it, I had to play it. I, I loved Golden Axe. Now, did oh, you guys I play as it. the Barbarian, the Dwarf, or the like Valkyrie like w- Warrior Lady? I think in because in 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 Golden Axe Two, 
you could press and hold your magic button, and the longer you'd hold it, you'd do a more powerful spell. I think I always did the female sorceress, because I think she was the water one. So I would always pick her, and you could like call down like a full screen wipe flood with her, which I, I always thought that. was really cool. Yeah, the dwarf yeah. had the lightning that would go across the screen and clear everything up. Also, yeah. listen, I know we're getting into this story, okay, but the main character of Golden Axe might have the best name I've ever heard in my life. What's his name? I have no idea. Axe Battler. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> it's Axe, Axe Battler. Battler. That is so good. Is that not the best name ever? I'm, I'm going to make that my username in Kingdom Come Deliverance, yes. too. Yeah. <laughs> Battler. Axe Battler. Oh, man. Oh, that's great. Oh, man. I, I love Golden Axe so much that when we would play GTA Online, I would just play like the the the, the little game that they made inside oh. GTA oh, Online yeah. that played like Golden Axe. All right. So what we found out this week is that they are adapting golden axe into an animated series but what's a little surprising is who's making the show because when i think of golden axe i don't necessarily think of it as being all that funny i think about it being full of action but this is being made by comedy central and they have promised that it is going to be a hilarious and loving homage to the games like is this something that you guys are interested in checking out they almost made it look a little American Gladiator and how they're making the main characters look. Oh, and there's so a lot good. of great Yeah, and there's a lot of great funny people behind it like Danny Pudi from Community, uh stuff like that. I I want to check this out. How about you guys? I if dude, if any if the recent video game adaptations have been any sort of like indicator, then I am in. I'll watch. I'm going to watch it regardless, you know, but it's like, I like the idea that they're saying, Hey, we kind of want to focus a little bit on the humor. I mean, a character by the name of Axe Battler, you know, a dwarf <laughs> that uses lightning. Like anybody, any nerd knows that dwarves don't use magic, you no, know? So no, it's like, never. yeah. It's, and so I, I am on, on <laughs> I, I'm in on this one, man. <laughs> Especially if they, if they can really kind of lean into that, uh, the just the outlandish nature of the, those types of things, and just make it super over the top. I think it'll do well. I am a big time sucker for cartoons. I still watch them all the time, especially if they're more kind of adult based. Um, I'll you can count me in for sure. Yeah, and you could play back on the Sega Genesis two player simultaneous co op, and you would always kind of like fight for who would get to jump on the dinosaur. I- <laughs> which you could run around and hit people with the tail or with the fire the fire breath. Yep. Yeah. So I was like, I wonder if in the show they're going to be like racing to see like who gets to ride the dinosaur or something like that. It's one we'll have to keep our eye on that. That one might be a lot of fun to check These out. 2d brawlers, man, like double dragon, golden ax, like all oh, yeah. so much fun back in the day, dude. I know we just yeah. did our nineties, you know, gaming in the nineties episode, but like that, they, you and a buddy at an arcade machine playing Double Dragon or Golden Axe was just some of the best times, man. Or The Simpsons. I was just going to say, um, or The Simpsons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, all the Turtles games. That so ca- much fun. That cabin I was at, uh, not to get too far off, but the cabin I was at uh, where we recorded, they had a whole stand up arcade machine and I found Simpsons on it. I was there for hours and they kept coming over. What are you playing? I'm like, Simpsons, get out of here. I'm trying to get to the end. <laughs> Uh, I got a button mash to pump up this balloon of Krusty's head. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so great. All right. Moving on to the next story here. So we have mentioned a couple of times on this show that there are upcoming games for Iron Man and Black Panther. We don't know a whole lot about them. We haven't spent very much time discussing it at all. We did find out this week that both of those games are going to be open world. Um all I would say is if I'm playing Iron Man in a game, it better be open world because I feel like the whole elevator pitch is that you're flying around in the suit. So, it, you know, you would think it would have to be open world. Hopefully in Black Panther, they give you a fun way, you know, maybe like some kind of flight suit or something. I don't know what they're going to do there. But, you know, we've said on the show before, not every game has to be open world. We've even kind of applauded the games that have kind of reined things in the last couple of years. To me, this makes a lot of sense. If you're a superhero, you're probably going around the open world, saving people, having fun traversing, whether it's like in a Spider-Man game or Batman or whatever. So to me, this makes a lot of sense to keep it open world. 
I, the only thing that my brain can process with how this would work and be really good is comparing it to Spider-Man. Yep. Yeah, at that point, right? Like make the traversal great. That's easy to imagine with Iron Man. You know, give me Anthem flight suits. Like that 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 was yeah. like the best flight in a video game in my opinion. Let me feel like I'm flying around in Anthem. Make it Iron Man. Give me, you know, I don't think that'll contain it to like one city like they did with Spider-Man, but like give me that open world where it's not absolutely monstrous. You know, it's a contained open world. Um, and I could see that being insanely good. Um, Black Panther, like, is he just going to run like a cheetah? Like, a, if only there was another <laughs> giant cat that maybe he could run like, um, you know. I feel like he's got to fly some kind or of like machine or have a flight suit. He's got to go do. down on all fours and he's going to run. I think so. Oh, yeah, he, his name's Black Panther. He's going to run like a panther. Oh God. Like, we'll he, see. He, maybe. He, maybe. I, well, yeah. I won't Although, play that game then. <laughs> no, those Wakandans got some high tech, man. So I'm sure they're going to give them a jet pack or something, you know, to make traversal fun. But yeah, it's one of those things where we, we we've kind of said, hey, we're almost sick of open world where not every game needs to be that way. And that's true. But that being said, open world works in a lot of ways. And so I can envision Iron Man being this way. I'm having a little bit harder time with Black Panther, to be honest with you. Um, I almost envision Black Panther to be more like the Batman Arkham games with like that hand to hand combat type stuff. So yeah. we really don't know. I, I mean, it's fine. I could see this needing to be open world on one hand, but I don't know on both. But we kind of need to see it in action to really judge that, too. Yeah. Well, they got, I mean, they got the template. Like you just said, Spider-Man is, is just, it's fun to travel through that world. It's, it's enjoyable just to go around. You'll spend time just cruising around and, and swinging, doing tricks while you swing. They even in Spider-Man, uh, the, the most recent one, they added like these super slingshot, uh, areas on top of towers where you can just glide now. Cause he's got his web gliders and you can fly that way. So if they can do it, like I said, they have the template. If they can do it similar to that where you can, you know, use these super boosts and, and just fly around as Iron Man, I mean, what's not to love about that? So as long as they get that part right, I think it'll be it'll be awesome. Is anybody in the world upset if they basically just copy the the traversal or nope. the open world like in Spider Man? Nobody's gonna be oh I saw this in Spider Man. I you know, I can't believe you ripped that off. No, everybody's gonna be like, This is great. They yeah, nailed it. You and then you're like your Iron Man, you can call down like the Hulkbuster suit, you know, for a big boss or something. You have to or spend some credits or something crazy, and you can call down cool stuff and you can use different, you know, weapon upgrades. I I think it like I said, they have it set up to where they know what they need to do. It's just now about execution and if they can do the right thing. And that's been a problem for Marvel games is yeah. the execution. They've we've had a lot of hit or miss entries, whether it's uh what was the one called like Marvel's midnight suns or guardians of the galaxy or the Marvel's Avengers, which was, you know, failed spectacularly. So we'll have to see, I would love to see like a really good flagship Marvel game outside of Spider-Man that I actually want to play for me. I'm still holding out for Wolverine. That's yeah. the one that I feel is going to be the most fun, but man, I would love a great iron man or black Panther game at the same time. It, it would be so much fun. All right, moving on to the next story here. Darkest Dungeon 2. So it's a turn-based roguelike RPG. It released in early access a few years back, had its full release exactly a year ago. The game is now headed to PS4 and PS5, and we got to see a PlayStation announcement trailer for it. I've always been aware of the game, mostly just by reputation, along with seeing a little bit of footage. I've never actually played it. Josh, I think you played... Did you play both Darkest Dungeons? I played Dungeons? both, man. Yeah, I'm I'm very familiar Are with they good? both of these games. They're real good. Like honestly, I enjoyed the heck out of both of them. They are hard. Um I think I actually prefer Darkest Dungeon over Darkest Dungeon 2. They made a few changes to like some of the roguelike stuff and it's still a great game, but I just I think I prefer the first. But yeah, these are roguelike games. You build a party of characters. They will die and when they die, they are like you know, you can lose them permanently if you're not careful. I like that. Yeah. And then it's like um, they go insane. So you're, you're kind of managing the whole premise of the insane. game. <laughs> the whole premise of the game is like these heroes are under this insane duress. Like if you were actually going into these dungeons and fighting these horrific creatures, like you're not leaving unscathed. So even if you beat the mission, 
your characters will get like PTSD or they'll go insane and they have like serious detriments at that point. Or in while you're in the mission, like they'll go insane from like enemies, like doing like debuffs on them and stuff. And then they'll, they'll actually wig out like in the middle of the mission and they might attack you or they refuse to attack or like all these variables and stuff. So very well done game. Amazing art style to them too. Just look at a trailer. I mean, darkest dungeon looks fantastic, dude. Um, so I, I'm a big fan of both of them, to be honest. So the fact that this is coming to PlayStation now for people is, is a good thing in my opinion. Cause it, there's going to be a lot of people that enjoy these games. So you're telling me killing thousands of monsters is going to have mental strain on my characters? Yeah, it really will. And then when they go crazy, believe me, you're going to know it. You know, Tell that, or, tell that to my Diablo characters. Well, they are doing a okay. <laughs> yeah. The worst thing is, is like you spend, you finally, like, you know, you have four people in your party, you build this party, you equip them, you level them up, you unlock new skills and all this stuff, and you start kicking butt, and then you come across this hard encounter, and it just kills like three of your people oh, and you, no. <laughs> you don't make it out to like, cause I, if I remember right in the first one, you can bring them back. No, actually I think if they die, they're just dead. Like you can, if they get knocked unconscious, you can like put them in a, like a hospital or if they're going insane, like you can put them in a brothel to like cheer them up kind of thing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's like, how you solve PTSD. Yeah, yeah, like, I mean, sure. You know, so that's how okay, they're okay. balancing these sanity meters and stuff. <laughs> Um, but yeah, losing a high level character is the worst because you're like, no, like he was level 12. Like he was my tank for the party. And this game wants you to just like bring up another character kind of thing. And it's all part of that roguelike system. So, but for me, it's kind of hard to lose like the party that you were really like amped to have finally too. So that's kind of a mechanic I miss in games. You used to have that a lot, like in the old Tom Clancy Rainbow Six games where you would like hire people, they'd go on missions, but they could like die on a mission and they're no longer available. Or even in stuff like Dragon Age, if you made a certain decision that one of your party members didn't like, if it was especially egregious, they would sometimes like turn and attack you. And now you're fighting like your ex party member. And if they die, they're yeah. gone from the rest of the game. Yeah. I, I like high stakes like that. That's cool. They, I mean, even in Metal Gear Solid 5, when you have your FOB base and stuff, and uh, you throw out some S-Class soldiers on a really hard mission, and you lost a couple when they came back, and you're like, dang it, those are a couple of my good yeah. guys, you know? But, uh, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm I'm not big into these types of games, but uh, I don't know. Probably not for me, but I'm sure it's great, and I'm excited for people coming to PlayStation. Yeah, I looked it up on Steam and Metacritic. So D Darkest Dungeon 2 has got a 75% on Steam and it's got an 81 from critics on Metacritic. So it's not like the highest rated game, but they must have quite a devoted fan base if they're still working on ports. The, the original is better than the sequel, in my opinion. I, like I said, I've, I, I probably have 20 plus hours in the second and I think I have 30 plus in the first one. Uh, I mean, I've definitely played these a good bit. And the first one is superior, in my opinion. 91% um, positive rating for the first one uh, out of oh, 117,000 wow. reviews, too. So there's it. they're good games, man. Interesting. Well, last story of the week. Not a whole lot to say here. The Wolf Among Us 2 is a game that we've brought up a few times. It is supposed to be released here later this year last or not last week this week we got to see a few screenshots of what they've been working on which were shared on twitter i think all of us would prefer to see some actual gameplay footage but these four screenshots are all we have to tide <laughs> us over for now is, is there really anything to say uh yeah paul it there's a lot right. to say because they they started this game's development in unreal engine 4 and yeah. then they moved it to unreal engine 5 which makes me very excited uh, the screenshots, I mean, great. the screenshots are beautiful. You know, this is fantasy, uh, like, like, uh, uh, not fables. What's the, uh, what, what is yeah, it? Like, like fable. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like snow white and the werewolf and fairy tales. That's the word fairy I was tales. looking yes, for. Not yes, fables. Yes. Um, I, I'm not yeah, saying little red I'm, riding hood. I'm big not bad saying wolf. all this because this is one of the games that I, you know, drafted in my game of the year auction <laughs> draft that we did. So. Uh -huh. and, didn't, and didn't know what I was getting. But now that I know what I'm getting, because I've seen these screenshots, whew, it's looking well, really good, you know, guys. 
screenshots just obviously <laughs> tell you so much. I was laughing when I when we were I was looking at this stuff and coming up for stuff for the show. Like I was just like, gamers are so funny. Like you just see it's just four screenshots and they're like, oh my gosh, did you see this? Or or how it is with Grand Theft Auto? Like some of the map got leaked. You know, it, everyone's just yeah. everyone's just so eager to you know we just we're just happy doofuses just want to play games. So. I think I think it's funny, but cool. Uh, yeah, the more the more they bring, obviously gameplay is best. But yeah, keep them coming. They're not necessarily the most action packed yeah, screenshots. Say, yeah, <laughs> they're well, a little a little pedestrian. The games aren't really action packed either. But you know, Telltale. If these are anywhere near the quality of the old Telltale games, especially The Walking Dead, like, like okay, I'm in then because. The Walking Dead Telltale series is one of the few games that I have like legitimately shed a tear while playing. And so if you yeah. can get that kind of reaction out of me with The Wolf Among Us 2, okay. I, I'll take that for sure. Very similar and just much more adult. Yeah. that That's the one thing that really stuck with me playing the first Wolf Among Us is like right off the bat, you can tell, oh, this is very mature. They're not holding anything back. You know, the the Walking Dead also gets mature as far as like the violence and some of the other stuff. But it's kind of like uh like my wife and I sometimes joke when you see TV ratings before a show, it'll be like TV MA, and then you'll see like violence, nudity, strong sexual content, smoking, you know, whatever. Yeah. It's got like all the letters. <laughs> yeah. That's that's like the wolf among us. You're getting all the letters <laughs> with with that kind of game. <laughs> So yeah, I can't wait to see more. I love the first one. Second one should be a blast. I just it felt it felt a little underwhelming that we got four screenshots and we're gonna have to wait for more. If it's supposed to come out this year, I would think if they're gonna release anything, it would be a little more exciting. Yeah. But oh well, what are you gonna do? It's better than nothing, I suppose. Yeah. All right. Well, that wraps up everything here for this week in gaming. Please check out Patreon support options at MultiplayerSquad.com. Make sure to leave us a five-star rating. You can also follow us on socials at Video Gamers Pod and come join our free Discord community. We'd love you all to jump in there and come say hi. We love you all. Until next time, happy gaming. See ya. And just remember, it wasn't me running down the street. Sure. <laughs> we have pictures. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. See you, everybody.